Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, I'm dropping back in as a follow-up to the video I did on yesterday concerning uh, Zavia uh, Marie Flanagan, the little two-year-old girl whose father uh, murdered her uh, while FaceTiming her mom. Um, and obviously I touched on it. Uh, I, uh, gave some context, uh, to the problem. Uh, I highlighted that this is an issue and there were some comments that were made, some questions that were asked, uh, how do we get here? What's going on? So what I decided to do is frame it slightly and I'm going to replay um, a video I did uh, almost what two years ago it was in 2021 almost two years ago but it is so prevalent and so true uh, concerning uh, the shaping of the black identity and the development and socialization of a people that were enslaved what we have to understand is that slavery wasn't simply an event. It was a transition and transformation of a certain people. And it created an entirely new people. Uh, we are not uh, our ancestors from Africa. Our experiences are unique to those that we connect to and we call brothers and sisters outside of the United States. Uh, we have to look at the slavery experience and understand what it did to our ancestors and how it may have been passed down. I've been doing lectures on epigenetics in psychology, epigenetics in health, uh, adverse childhood experiences, how our environmental stresses are actually killing us physically, uh, the long-term health implications of growing up in a stressful life. Uh, I've, I've, I've been working on it. I've been lecturing. I did a workshop a couple of weeks ago. No, last weekend. It was last weekend. Um, and I'm going to do the, everything I can to educate you. And I'm going to venture off and uh, digress for just a second because I think it needs to be said. You know, as an analytical person, as a person who deals with numbers and understanding data, I am very careful of monitoring what I'm doing, who it's reaching, uh, am I having an impact because I'm not about empty movement. And the one thing that consistently uh, catches my concern, it doesn't upset me, I'm not frustrated by it, but I am definitely concerned, and that is we do not gravitate towards the things that can help us. We are so easily distracted by nonsense. We're so easily distracted by celebrity gossip. We're so easily distracted by political ploys and news media uh, releases that we don't see the opportunity to grow. I just look at how people respond to the information that I share. If I talk about uh, something that's trending, obviously to do with somebody well-known, celebrity, um, subscribership goes up slightly, not big, but there's an increase. There is an increase of viewership of that particular video, and I'm watching it. Uh, now, what I try to do is I try to make sure that when I'm talking about these topics that it's a teaching moment, that I'm taking it and I'm showing how it impacts us and what we need to be doing and that you can take something and it actually can be applied to how you're moving, how you're thinking, how you're viewing things. But what I also know is when I'm deeply addressing issues, no celebrity just what's really going on the reverse happens you know i can see not getting as many views because okay not as many people are attracted to people actually unsubscribe when i'm talking and sharing real stuff it's like okay i thought he was going to be talking about this but i guess not so i'm gonna go unsubscribe uh i never got that i mean like 
You know, it's not like I'm coming to your house if you don't unsubscribe me. But it's just weird that that's where we are as a people. We want to be entertained. We want uh, to laugh, escapism. Um, we want to pretend that what we are seeing isn't happening. happening. I was having this conversation yesterday. We have so much unraveling around us at such a rapid pace and most of us are sitting there as if nothing's going wrong as if if we just sit here and pretend it's not happening it'll go away problems don't go away you solve them if you don't solve them they end up becoming a bigger problem and that's what we're dealing with when we look at black men and uh, violence so how long have i been talking to you about african-american and, and adolescent and young uh, uh, African American adolescent and young adult male violence. How long have I been talking to you about the need to properly and effectively socialize young black men? How long have I been talking to you about how that works and how important it is? It reduces the proclivity for violence. It, re it increases the chances of them graduating and creating uh, the capacity for themselves to earn a living wage. It increases their ability to uh, effectively lead a family. All of these things have been studied by by uh, unbelievably committed minds and great people that I admire. Uh, I've had my hands in it for over 20 years. Uh, Dr. Howard Stevenson, even longer. Dr. George DeGroo, uh, even longer. Dr. Naeem Arbar, even longer. And before he passed away, Dr. Amos Wilson. Uh, we, 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 I mean, and, and I've gone on this more. Uh, and I'm not going to leave out Dr. Umar Johnson. Say what you want to about this brother, but he knows his shit. Um, we are going to have to own the responsibility of what's happening. Some of the things I saw in the comments yesterday troubled me because it's like somebody said, uh, I think one of the reasons that your programs don't get any support, Dr. Wallace, is people have uh, black people just give up. They think, you know, it's, uh, it's we're not able to fix it. That's a very defeated defeatist mindset but i get it there are a bunch of people who are just like hey look it's it what it is what it is but that's how it got that way that's how it got that way not enough people caring about what they saw and standing up and doing something about it that's how it got that way that's how we ended up where we are now and go back look at some of the stuff that i posted years ago not just on uh, YouTube, well, go to the site, look at the articles I wrote, go look at some of the books I wrote and see what's happening now and see if I didn't say it was going to happen. It's predictable. It's truly predictable. And we, it, and the thing is, anything that's predictable also has a way to be intercepted. Because if it's predictable, it's predictable because you're looking at certain things and you're able to put two and two together to end, know where you're ending up. Well, you can change the equation at any time now here's the problem and here's why most people don't get involved nobody wants to make the sacrifice to create a better place nobody wants to make the sacrifice uh to create a better situation and what i mean by that is they've done such a good job of they've done such a good job of ushering us into an age of individualism where it's about us, where we don't consider the community. We think about what we get, how things are going for us. Well, that immediately takes away our ability to empathize and connect with our brothers and sisters. So if it's not bothering me, it's not that big of a deal. I see it. That's a shame. Oh, my God. And then I, I've said what I had to say. I've addressed it. I've, I've, I've uh, uh, expressed my dissension and I'm done. There's a problem with that. And so what happens is we don't want to put in the time. We want, you know, if it doesn't affect me, there are people that I've literally talked to. And I say, well, you know, by 2038, this is going to happen. By 2030, this is going to happen. And they're doing the math in their head. How will I be at 2038? Should it even matter to me? What about your kids? What about your grandkids? What about their kids? What about their grandkids? What happened to the responsibility of leaving the world better for your progeny than you than you received it? What happened to uh, doing that? We're going to be the first generation, if something doesn't change, that will leave this place worse than we found it. And no, it's not just a black issue, but we have to start with us. We've never had uh, people rallying to come to our aid. We have to. That's the thing. 
But if we don't understand how all this stuff works, we don't understand why. And so um, I want us to really get this. I hope that the video uh, from a couple of years ago really hits home. Uh, it's not that long, but I definitely want you to see what's going on. So check it out and I'll close out in a second. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that you guys have had a great day uh, as you start to wind, wind down your week. Uh, as for me, it's been, as usual, a long day and I'm not done yet. It's uh, after four. Um, I'm going to go home and take a quick break and then I'm going to finish up there. But I want to take some time and use this travel time to get some things done uh, in communicating some of my concerns and uh, so forth with you guys while I'm traveling. And so with that being said, uh, get right to it. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we need to expand our reach uh, to be as impactful as we possibly can. So if you uh, find what you hear or see on this channel useful, uh, make sure to share it with those that you think it will be helpful for or enlightening to and uh, that will be appreciated. Again, this is about empowerment. This is about uh, bringing knowledge, empowerment, uh, accountability. It's about challenging uh, our people to rise to the occasion. What I want to share with you guys today is a little history a little sociology, a little psychology, all wrapped up into about seven or eight minutes. I don't want it to be too long. Uh, my seven or eight minutes, you know, may get a little longer. Uh, for those of you who know me, I'm very detail oriented. So I like to explain myself. So I leave very little to be misinterpreted. Uh, it's just the way that I've always been. Well, how did we get to a point and a place where we are in last place in every socioeconomic category and every political category. Um, how did we get to the point where we are so heavily dependent upon a people who collectively do not have our best interest at heart? How are we so easily found working on and doing things that actually are diametrically opposed to the paths that we need to take in order to empower ourselves? Put more simple, why are we so bent towards doing things that serve them and not ourselves? Well, it all boils down to three words, values, interests and principles. Everybody functions on values, interests, and principles. Your character is built on values, interests, and principles. How you operate in the world is built on values, interests, and principles. You can call them VIPs, the uh, things that are immensely important. Uh, to the elevation and su uh, sustaining of any group or people when they are uh, misguided, when they are interrupted, when they are in any way manipulated, it has a negative impact. Well, what you have to understand is over 400 years ago, our entire socioeconomic ecosystem was disrupted. When we were pulled out of our natural habitat, our natural environment, uh, our indigenous sphere, and we were moved around and placed in different places on this planet. And what, what happened is, um, what happened is 
the natural the natural practice of subjugation began historically when you study the conquering of any people for thousands of years back when you study the conquering of any people one of the first things you have to do is interrupt their identity and the way that you interrupt their identity is you rob them of their values, their interests, their principles, their spiritual practices, their names, and their history. When you do that, you remove them from their identity. Their identity and their heritage is what serves as the foundation of their hope, the foundation of their expectation and anticipation of the future and the very force that will push them through their difficult moments. You don't completely subjugate or enslave a people with shackles. Uh, Haiti proved that. Uh, it's been proven through time that while shackles will provide temporary restraint, you must first enslave the mind before you can ultimately enslave the people. Well, a part of that process is the interruption of values, interests, and principles. It is the taking away of the very thing in the core element that provides identity, substance, and responsibility, uh, you know, uh, how one projects into the future, what they can expect from life, the self-concept, the self-identity, self-esteem, self-confidence, all of that comes through values, interests, and principles that are normally dictated in the early years within the filial environment, the family environment, the home. And then it is passed on and uh, reinforced throughout the village. And now you would equate the village to the community. Um, here's the problem. One of the first things that happened when we were brought up here is we, our names were changed. We were given the names of our captors. Uh, we were renamed by our captors, which also created an identity of subjugation. Someone else had more power over me at a level that allowed them to take my name and give me a name. I don't have the authority to name myself or my progeny. Um, if I do name myself and my progeny, it has to be approved by someone else who has authority over me. Um, and here we go. The giving the, of a child a name was something immensely important within the history of our people dating back to the continent of Africa. Uh, regardless of village uh, or, or regardless of what is now nations and borders, regardless of where you were, this was pretty much a common theme that the naming of a child set the course of the child's life. The establishment of that came long before the child was born. And then you, you're put into an environment where that's interrupted. Then you're put into an environment with the very core element that allows you to establish values, interests, and principles that would serve uh, you as an individual and your collective people or your tribe is taken away, which is the family. The family was constantly and abruptly disrupted. Children were sold off, men were sold off, women were sold off for the sole purpose of not allowing the cohesive function of the family to come together and create bonds. Bonds lead to the willingness to die for something. Bonds lead to uh, an ability to stand on something and have something to live for. Everything that created any form of structure and stability was disrupted. and. Eventually, you get to a point where the transatlantic slave trade was outlawed. But by that time, uh, the slave population had grown to the point to where it would sustain itself. So now, slaves were born. So now you're born without an understanding of a history. You're born into a value system that does not value you. And you are born into it in a place and a position of subjugation in which you never knew that there was a point that you were free. It may be barely 
uh, uh, vaguely referred to, but there's no history. The griots had been killed and died off. There were no one. There was no one to tell you of the great times. There were no one to tell you of who you were and what you were capable of, the stock you come from, and the principles upon which your ancestors lived. So you began to believe that where you were was your lot in life, and then you start to perpetuate it. And then even there comes a time when the chattel slavery is outlawed and then you are told you have freedom but freedom is not experienced and it's it's the it's the reverse of slavery slavery is not experienced until the mind is fully subjugated and under the control of the one who is the enslaver or the oppressor the same thing for liberation liberation is not experienced when the shackles are removed liberation liberation is experienced when the mind is set free when the mind has its own focus, when the mind now pursues that thing which is best for the one who houses the mind. And that is something that the vast majority of us have not experienced. I keep trying to tell everyone, you can't keep trusting a system to educate your children, first and foremost. Second of all, you're going to have to look within the family structure and understand how important that structure is in order to understand why we have to restore it because it's within the family structure that values, interests, and principles are first introduced. A child is first introduced to the values, interests, and principles that will serve them best when they're in the home. When the home is disrupted, when the home is gutted, when the home is dysfunctional, when the home is functioning in a state of toxicity, there is no uh, positive uh, and stable and consistent environment in which a child can have the right principles inculcated into their psyche at a level that it's anchored enough that when they go out into a world and experience messages that are diametrically opposed to the idea that they've been given that they can stand on it. you got to inculcate it deeply enough and protect it long enough that it takes root and they understand who they are. They're not shaken by messages that they're inferior they're not shaken by messages that they're not beautiful. They're not shaken by messages that they are savages. They're not shaken by messages that they are naturally and uh, in, in, innately animalistic. They know who they are. They understand the force of their power, the, the breadth and, and, and the broadness of their creativity and their imagination and their power. They understand that civilization was birthed through their creativity and the ability to take something and make it out of nothing, that they come from a stock that's so exceptional and extraordinary that they don't have to demean anybody that's not a part of them to experience their greatness. Their greatness stands alone, not by demeaning or degrading someone else, but by just purely being who they are. We have a long way to go. We're not educated. I'm trying to tell you, when we bring children into the midst of our programs, they come in thinking and behaving one way they leave thinking and behaving another. Well, they never really truly leave because we don't lose contact. We don't step back. We have kids, when we came into their life, they were on a crash course to early pregnancy and prison. Now, some of those kids are dropping back in and visiting and uh, as, as, as college graduates for those who can find a way. And we talk, college isn't for everybody. If you can't see a means through which you can get through college with little to no debt and then immediately turn what you get from college into a means through which you can create an income, college is not for you. Maybe you need a trade. Maybe you need to take that creative power in your mind and create your own opportunity through a business. We teach ownership is the number one goal. You may have to go through a job or two to get to a point of ownership because you have responsibilities as an adult. But you should never be satisfied that we teach them values, interests, and principles that separate them from the need to be supported and validated by a system that does not have their interests at heart. We do all of that. And what I'm telling you is when you introduce it and you're consistent with it and you show it and they st you start to see the lights come on. Oh, that's a beautiful feeling when you start to see the lights come on. But what I'm telling you is we can't consistently do what we're doing. That's why so much darkness is setting in. That's why we have so much death in our community. You know why? 
because we haven't showed them the beauty of self. We haven't introduced them to the, to the broadness of their majesty. We haven't done that in a grand scope of things. They don't see any value in themselves. And when a child doesn't see value in themselves, it's impossible for them to see values in the lives of others who look like them. They, they, they tend to have a level of self-hatred because they don't measure up to the standard of Eurocentric uh, reality. They don't stand up to the Eurocentric idea of what is, the Eurocentric idea of what's popular and Eurocentric idea of what's beautiful, the Eurocentric idea of what's professional and, and, and what's classy and everything else. We are so busy trying to fit into and integrate into a system that was never meant for us that we never truly walk into our own self-majesty and we lose sight of who we are or we never gain sight of who we are and we walk around in a fog that makes us easily manipulated and easily triggered and we go around being misled by people who are benefiting from our lost state of mind. It's time to change it. I've been writing about it for decades. I've been lecturing on it for decades. And, 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 and it's got to get beyond the state of simply hearing. It's got to become something that we embrace something that we take on, something that we immerse ourselves in. It's got to become a part of our walk, of our responsibility. There has to be levels of accountability. There has to be a love for something outside of ourselves. Because one of the problems that I see far too often is that for those of us who are able to make it, a lot of us walk away from the responsibility. We disconnect. We don't even want to be associated with it. We start finding all kinds of reasons not to be a part part of it and then we leave those behind who we really should be helping it's time for something better look I'm, 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 I'm going to leave it at that I've gone way longer than I planned on going I've doubled my 7 minutes plus but I'm going to get off of here look we've got work to do we've got to understand the importance of instilling values, interests, and principles into our youth that lead them to something greater. And they need to be protected long enough for those teachings and those lessons and those VIPs to take root. On that note, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to support the work that we do at the Odyssey Project. Uh, the links are in the description box. The means through which you can show your love is in the description box. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. All right. Look, I thank you uh, for allowing me to uh, stop in on you and share with you on this Sunday. I really hope that you get the understanding of where we're at and why it's so important that we properly socialize our kids. That's simply uh, anchoring their identity. It's simply reminding them of who they are. It's simply preparing them to go out into a world that's inherently hostile towards them and not only win and compete. If we don't do this, we are turning a loose young black children, especially black boys, who are gonna go into a world that's gonna immediately frustrate them. Starting as early as five years old, I've written on that in Academic Apartheid. And, 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 and they're gonna ultimately be looking for this thing that all men seek and that's respect and a place. And when they don't get it, they'll start fighting and they, they'll become disruptive. They won't understand what to do with their emotions. They will be led by their emotions instead of responding to them. And that is where the danger lies. It is not normal to kill your offspring as a man. That's your responsibility to protect your offspring. So then you have to ask, where does it come from? Killers aren't born, they're created. Only about 1% or less of the entire world population are born um, uh, as uh, psychopaths, an inability to feel, an inability uh, to have a conscious or be concerned with how their actions affect others. Everybody else has a high influence of environmental uh, stimuli. So that's just something to think about. But again, we've got work to do. 
on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. If you believe in the work we do, show some love, show some support. Uh, the way you can support us is in the description box. I'm out. Take care. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They said I should give it up like yeah, that just ain't good enough. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.